confirm that we are going. We are live. Woo! It's all working. All right, yeah. Cool. I can hear audio. You can I'm hear me. Send our tweet. Again? Sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? Does this work okay? You sound great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't know when I'm supposed to start talking. I don't know if anybody's here yet. <laughs> <laughs> People are starting to load in, so you can welcome them if you wish, and we'll just get things going. Sure. Uh, hey guys, I'm painting in DeviantArt's office, and it's very exciting. <laughs> Um, it's the thing I've been working on all week for them. It's a, like a giant whale dragon and a little bird dragon, and they're sort of like meeting up, um, uh, emphasizing like the relationship between the two, even though like they're greatly disparate species, like they both come from the same ancestry, like they're still connected, it's still part of the same world, an ecosystem. I think that's like a neat thing to do. It's a neat, um, neat way to use dragons, I guess. Yeah, why don't you tell them a little bit about the prompt you were given? Sure. Uh, yeah, so the prompt I was given for this piece was um, uh, the word kindred. <laughs> They're like, hey, basically, you know, draw whatever the hell you want. Uh, just make it kindred, you know? And I'm like, great, now i got to look that, that word. Um, <laughs> so once I found out what it meant, uh, I needed to figure out what I wanted to do with that. And I sort of wanted to lean into, like, not so much, like, close family, but, like, like you know, greater ecological family in the sense that, like, you know, all animals are sort of related to one another, and I thought that was a neat thing to play up with this illustration. And so, uh, because I like to draw monsters and I like dragons, <laughs> I just made them dragons instead of something else, like big cats, like somebody probably would do. Um, and yeah, so I'm just working on the Miss Thing's big chin beak horn thing. Uh, you can see the similarities because, like, this little guy has his um, his little beak here. And he's got like these floppy ears, and he's got like little horns. And then all of those forms are repeated in the big guy. So he's got his horns up here, and then he's got like sort of like you know lar much larger ears, which maybe you can see better on this far one. Uh, sort of he's blurry, <laughs> but um, and then he's got like this big sort of like beak horn uh, setup. So it's all sort of like trying to take the forms of the little guy and like repeat them on the big one to make them look uh, a little bit more like familial bonded. Oh yes, I'm gonna do that. All right, I think we're good there. Hi, Devin. Devin is who I was thinking about when um, I mentioned somebody else would probably do cats. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, what would Devin do? And then she would do like a house cat and a lion. I thought, well, I should just do that, but like with dragons. I used to have a what would Devin do bracelet that I would wear. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, she's a sharp one, that Devin. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody in the chat is like talking because I don't see the chat. But oh, um, I guess if they're looking moderate. Bloody Wing says hello. FIFA World. Yay, FIFA World. Kobo Wolf, who I don't know if you met Amber when you were in last time. Uh, she's one of our curators. Okay. And uh, works with us to make all of the amazing strips that are on the front page. Yeah, she's the one that did that front page uh, post for you. Yeah, the front page. Like oh. Your art on the front page. Cool. She'll be visiting next, so make sure you hide the remote from her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still haven't found that thing. 
Dave has not made any statements. No. <laughs> He's ignored all of our he questions. He probably just found it in his backpack, and he's like, shit, yeah, what do I exactly. do with this? He left his shorts here, and he took them off. Did he leave pants here? Yes. Yeah. He changed for our filming, and uh-huh. then he left. His well, pants. Finders keepers, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go through and pull out some of the questions that people put on Instagram. All right is a great way to fill time as you work on stuff. Yeah. Multitasking. And usually I'm like face deep uh, in some TV show in my podcast or whatever. Um. Uh, Azraf says, color-coded layers. That's how you know a piece is intense. Yeah. No, I, um, I have color-coded groups um, because I would be totally lost without it. Yeah. Um, I've done way too many pieces with way too many layers to make that mistake again. How many times in your life do you think that you've worked on the wrong layer and realized too late? Like three, maybe. Only three? Yeah. Oh. It's, I'm very careful about which layer I'm on. Um, and also, I've figured out pretty good systems. Like, if I am on the wrong layer, how to like pull all that stuff that I just did off of that layer and put it on the correct layer. Well played, well played. Yeah. I, I tell people I'm a professional, but they don't believe me until I like do that. It's a heavy flex. Yeah. I know rendering is not necessarily the most interesting thing in the world to watch, but got to get that nose horn looking pretty. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in chat, and we'll present those to RJ. Oh, I'm being presented. This is so <laughs> fancy. I'm going to use my full vocabulary when we're on stream. Most of the time when I stream, I don't even like have voice on. I just like uh, look at the chat and answer a question um, once in a while, and I stream for like twelve hours. Twelve hour stream? Yeah, like I think whenever I I am streaming, I average like eight to ten hours, um, and my longest one was like twenty one hours. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was ill advised, but you feel like really satisfied after working that long day. I believe. What's your favorite brush to use? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It changes like every now and then. Like I'll find a brush pack from some artist. I'm like, oh, this is not what they intended this brush for, but it's got a really great like effect for you know such and such. And yeah, it just like varies. I've I've got like a stable of brushes that are like my most go tos, but they're all you know serve different purposes. Hey, Eric's here. Yeah, so I was Shin in the chat. Thank you for the host. Thank you. Eric saying it's looking amazing so far. Thank you. And Fifa wants to know, do you usually do everything in Photoshop or do you use other programs as well? 100% Photoshop, start to finish. Is that what you began on? Uh, yeah, as far as like digital art, yeah. Yeah, I've been using Photoshop now. Like I first got into it in like 2005. Um, when I was still in high school, but I didn't know what layers were, and I just sort of like used the paint bucket to fill in like my scanned in lines, uh-huh. and it was all terrible. Um, but then like when I was in college, when I first got to like college in 2007, I, uh, I buckled down and was like, I should teach myself what layers are, and um, it's been learning ever since. But I think I've got a pretty good beat on, on what the program does. I saw you drawing with paper and ink the other day when we were in that meeting. Do you ever like take something like that and scan it in and and, like build off of that? Very rarely these days, just because like most of the time when I'm drawing, I'm just drawing on the computer. Um, I really only draw with pen if I'm like away from the computer or forced to be in a meeting. (laughs) When I worked at my last job, they always had like a stack of post-it notes on the meeting tables. And every meeting, I would just come out with like 
12 post-it notes packed full of little sketches. And sometimes I would like, you know, utilize those ideas for work. Um, sometimes I was just dicking around. Hey, Danny's here. Hi, Danny. yourself working on something and know that you're the only human being who's ever going to notice that you did it? Uh, I try not to think about it because that's most of the painting. Uh, <laughs> no, I just, you know, it's like you work on it until like you can't spot any of the things that bother you anymore and then you're like, well, that, I guess that's done. Is that your metric for when a piece is finished? Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I pull out and I'm like, there's nowhere left that I want to like immediately zoom into and I just like, you know, sit on it. And I usually try and like sleep on a piece before I like go to post it because there's been too many cases where I get a little trigger happy and I'm like, oh, it's done. I'm, I better post it. And then like I keep updating it and changing it like throughout the day because I, I was a little too early on the on that one. But so yeah, it's, that's good advice. Always <laughs> sleep on your, your pictures because or if you can afford to, you know, sometimes you get a deadline. You're just like, well, it's crap, but it's it's done. Oh, that's a that's a hard question. Yeah. Who's your favorite office dog so far? Your little squirrely one's kind of funny. I like I like the the weird haircut. Oliver is kind of funny. I don't, I don't want to start any wars, but RJ is a cat person. I am a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> I think Frank's going to win that. <laughs> yeah, Frank is the most cat dog. Frank hasn't been here. He'll be here Friday. Oh, there you go. He'll come in late as like a, as a late entry and, and win over everybody. <laughs> My people. Wow, Sashin has five cats. When I was a kid, our family um, didn't get our cats fixed. And I was probably should have, because at one point we had 16 cats. <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, now I have two, but that's, that's good enough. Are they fixed? Yes. Well, and they're, they're both male, so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of them is like a little bastard, um, but that's the one I like more because he has more personality because he's a little bastard. He, um, it's more endearing. Here's a question. Did you see the movie Cats? Yes, uh, regrettably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, girlfriend was like really excited to see it, and she loved it. Um, she kept going on about how it was so much better than all the Star Wars movies. Oh. And um, I mean, I don't disagree with her about the new ones necessarily, but... <laughs> Uh, she doesn't like the old ones either. Humble Hill says it's the most insane, bonkers thing I have ever seen. It's so bad. It just like it. made me want to fall asleep because it was just like too much, and it was just like it just kept going. <laughs> just, a new character gets introduced, and they're like, "Well, great, move on to the next one," and then just like that just keeps happening, and then. I, Idris Elba shows up like naked at the end of the movie, and I just, it's very uncomfortable. Whoa. It's like all the other cats, they're naked the whole time, but Idris Elba has clothing, and then he's like, no, I'm going to be naked too and do magic. Spoilers. Oh, yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, everyone in the chat. If you were really looking forward to uh, cats. Uh, I'm really enjoying our set design here with. The Fellas are like hiding behind like Kim Kardashian and the soon gift. <laughs> yeah. It's like popping out like what? You gotta get somebody in that costume. Oh my god. For the longest time as well. I've wanted someone to hide in the costume and be still in yeah. shot for a good half hour. What do you do with that pole man? I'm just gonna have it behind him. <laughs> I say we should do it on Friday, but I think we still be gone. <laughs> There's one person in the DeviantArt office who can fit in the mascot costume. 
So know that if you're applying for any jobs at DeviantArt and you're under five foot three, <laughs> you've got an advantage. Let's throw that on my resume. Added additional responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, it's right up there. Uh, so you've been in the office for three days now. Yes, what's that's it true. like? Um, it's an office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's super cool. Like with the floor to ceiling windows, I think that's like the most exciting part. Is just you you know everywhere you look, you get like the entire view of like all of LA. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that you can see downtown. You can see a little bit behind you in this shot. Uh, are there any good office snacks is a question in chat. Uh, I haven't delved into the snacks much, but like the lunches here are pretty dope. I've enjoyed those. Yeah, today we had Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah that was good. Tomorrow we have salad bar, unfortunately. <sighs> I mean, I like a salad. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about salad bar day is they have a chicken tender. Okay. Which I don't know how it fits in with salad. But... You throw them in the salad. You ever had a chicken salad? <laughs> Chicken tender day. Uh, people are, uh, Bloody Wing is very impressed that you haven't mirrored your canvas yet. Oh, yeah, because I did that all like early on. Um, and now at this point, if I tried to flip the canvas, it would take like three minutes because <laughs> there's so many layers. And I know new photo, like a newer version of Photoshop has like a fix for that, which is great, but uh, I don't want to update to that one yet because it breaks some of the other stuff that I use. Jeez. Copy, merge, paste, flip that real quick. Yes, I've done that actually. Yeah, Option okay. Command Shift E. Apple A first. Yep. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, copy merge. I just learned it recently on accident. I've done the merge all, Ooh. select all, copy. Go back in history. Oh no. Paste for many years. Yeah, I um I use as many shortcuts as possible because <laughs> there's too many things that I try to paint. It's like that was one of the things when they gave me this uh, this prompt. I'm like, well, I know I only really have three days to paint this, so I should like try and be a little less ambitious. And you know, so I paint a whole school of fish and like two dragons and an octopus. Um, a bit off a little bit more than I could chew reasonably, but I think it's turning out pretty good. It's looking great. Thank you. People in chat, loving it. There's a little Easter egg here. This little squid oh. has a DeviantArt logo on him. Oh. And his eye is also a DeviantArt symbol. Because hey. um, it's the only place that has like green, <laughs> really. So <laughs> That's awesome. Next one, get a nod. And it can also become a meme. You can put other companies' logos on the. No. <laughs> I mean, this giant squid here has kind of got ArtStation's colors, right? <laughs> He's also getting eaten. Ooh. We can just call this big dragon the economy. <laughs> <laughs> it has a name now. Uh, FIFA wants to know how many hours you've invested in the feast thus far. Uh, so. I think, because I did like a sketch before I came down, uh, and that was probably like a good three or so hours. Um, and then, well, like three work days. So it's like somewhere in the neighborhood of getting up to closer to, to 30 hours, which is pretty average for my stuff. Tell us about this fantastic shortcut pad you have here. Oh, what this this thing here? Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it. Or yeah, there it is. See it. Uh, yeah, so this is the Razer Tartarus V2. Uh, it's a free plug for Razer, um, but it's like a little left-hand keyboard that has a bunch of. It's made for like you know, MMOs and, and gaming where you need too many buttons. But another thing where you need too many buttons is Photoshop. Mm. So I just programmed a bunch of Photoshop shortcuts into it. And it's wonderful. And it has a little scroll wheel on it, so I can just like use that and uh, scroll back undos, which is pretty cool. And I recommend that every artist get one. It took about a month to like acclimate to in like 2013, but I've been using one ever since, and I'm about half as fast without it now. That's awesome. I mapped a bunch of my shortcuts to my MX Master. 
Okay. But that looks like a more efficient way to do it because you can map full macros to that. Yeah, yeah, you can do macros, um, uh, a whole bunch of stuff, and it's got just like a ton of keys because I used to use all of the, like the little Wacom tablet shortcut keys, but like just not enough of them. So now I just have all those disabled and just moved them all to my, my little thing. That's very cool. Yeah, it's great because even the uh, you know saved is one of them, so it's very easy to do that and not forget to save my stuff. But you can see the size of the file uh, it's trying to save. I think it's like four gigabytes right now. Mm. Which You're in PSB territory. Yes. Yeah. I always work in PSB because it always ends up over the two gig limit. <laughs> So did you say how many hours you're in? Yeah, like almost 30-ish. Is that about standard? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, it depends. Like for my uh, stuff that has like a deadline, yeah, that's 20, 30 hours is pretty average. Um, but then like stuff for me, uh, <laughs> you know, it can be dozens and dozens. The piece you just did was what, what 140? Yeah, I just finished a piece, took 140 hours. Um, worked on over a period of 10 months. Wow. Yeah. Can you log the hours? I have a program, not on this computer, but on my other computer that like counts up the, um, the hours spent in each program every month, hmm. which is really great. And I wish that I could get that program on this one, but they don't make it anymore. And it's not updated for this operating system on this laptop. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Um, but it's great to know that, you know, uh, especially in freelance life that I'm spending like 150 hours in, in my web browser and then like 100 hours in Photoshop. So mm -hmm. it's demoralizing, but. Have you ever, do you ever just like rage quit a piece because you just like are angry at it or do you put pieces down and go back to them later? Uh, generally, I try to do enough preparation work like early in you know like enough planning where i'm not gonna get into a situation where i have to like quit because it's just not working out because hopefully if i did everything right you know it should work out uh but that one that i, I just finished the 140 hour one i almost quit that at like 100 hours deep just because it, it was so frustrating that piece was like the most frustrating thing i finished in in like a decade but yeah so I mean, basically, the answer is, with good planning, um, it shouldn't happen to you. Unless, like, the client wants it, like, radically changed, and you're just like, no, I disagree with you on a fundamental level. Someone's asking, if you could give the whole VA community one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, finish your art. <laughs> Post it. That's a good one. A lot of people say that they just don't feel comfortable uploading their art ever. They just get self com or self conscious about it. There we go. Almost said self confident, which would be <laughs> the wrong reason not to post your art. I mean, there's like the other side of that as well, where like you know, also don't feel like you have to post everything because you know if you overshare and you know if you're trying to like learn something new, you may not be confident in it and. You may not try to learn something new because you know if you feel like you have to post it, you feel like it has to be like good enough to post, and so you, you keep like running into yourself where you're like, well, it's got to be good, it's got to be good enough to post, so I can't like take any risks on this, and then you never learn anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's you know don't feel obligated to put up everything online because you know if you disappear for a month. Um, that's okay, and people will still find you later. So I know we spoke on this a little in the Facebook feature that we did, but you were originally going into like more human character design and concepts early on, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, I mean, when I was a kid, it was all dinosaurs all the time. Because, um, you know, I was like three when Jurassic Park came out. 
and I was into, into dinosaurs before I even saw that in theaters. Um, I distinctly remember sitting on like the playground in preschool, uh, getting really excited to see Jurassic Park because like a friend's dad heard that somebody got eaten on the toilet, and I, I just thought that was hilarious as a three-year-old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then you know, as I got older, Dragon Ball Z sort of like hit me really hard, and I wanted to draw anime men and took me a long time to sort of break myself of that. But um, I did end up going to art school because I wanted to be like a human character designer, you know, somebody like Wes Burt. Mm -hmm. um, and then by the time I was sort of finishing up my time at art school, I just kept drawing more dinosaurs. And I'm like, oh, this is way easier than drawing people. I think I like this better. I, it, I don't know, it just, it comes much more naturally to me. Like I can draw people fine, but like monsters, that, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, a little bit of that Jurassic Park influence on the screen right now, where you've got like a, the eye, kind of like when a T-Rex is oh. looking into the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the animatronics in that are great. I love how much was practical in it, too. Like, there's such really cool practical effects in that. Yep. Have you been on the ride? Uh, when I was a kid. Um, I know they like recently made it Jurassic World. Yeah, I feel like it'll be better. Yeah, I'm also I'm just not like into Jurassic World because like Jurassic Park was great uh, and like a big step forward for like science communication, but you know in 1993, and science has moved on, but <laughs> Jurassic Park hasn't. So it's not doing science any favors the way that they're still presenting animals like Velociraptor one wasn't six feet tall, um, two. <laughs> Look at that Fully so, feathered. I mean, they're genetic I, mutating them now. They are. Oh, and like, they... Dominus Rex. <laughs> God. <laughs> Even fellas upset with that, man. Uh, Don't bring that up. Uh, <laughs> that, that name is nothing in this house. We say as we have a... Yeah, they're also doing a... Series of dragons. A flying. Jurassic Park Live uh, Hootering show. Have you seen that? I think I've some clips from it, because they have like, like the... the you know, big animatronic... Rex it walks through, yeah. yeah. So what would you say your favorite dinosaur is? Oh, that's easy, it's T-Rex. It's not just my favorite dinosaur, it's my favorite, like, thing. Yeah? Yeah. Why, why T-Rex? He's got a big face, it's good. It does. Uh, also, T-Rex is great because, like, it's just like a, an animal Mary Sue, but it actually exists because it's, like, the best at everything. It's, like, the, the one of the fastest of all the large theropods. It might be the fastest. Um, it's got like one of the best turning radiuses. It's got the, the biggest, you know, mouth, the strongest bite force, like the most mass. It's just like the, the you know, the coolest kid in school. Until he's a dolphin. So then, what's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, it's Tyrantrum, which is the T-Rex Pokemon. Yeah, I, yep. I figure. <laughs> but, you know. So yeah, the one of the things that uh, you did recently was uh, the Detective Pikachu stuff. That's great. Uh, let's. What what got you into doing Pokemon originally in a realistic style? Well, so you know when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, Pokemon was always like you know like that was the thing because you know I was eight years old when it hit America. It was like the perfect age for it. So I always liked Pokemon, and like even when I was a kid, I would like you know draw them all the time. I, I spent many nights trying to fit them all into one big like piece of uh, you know uh, paper I was working on, and um, yeah, so it was just like always something I was really into. And like once I got out of art school, you know, like I said, I was sort of like leaning more into the creature stuff, and I was drawing a shark dinosaur, which like turned into Garchomp, um, which is a like Pokemon, and <laughs> people really liked it. Uh, people really really liked it. So I did a few more, and they kept really liking it. So I kept doing more, um, which was great for me because it sort of like worked into like a creature design master class because I didn't have any like formal training in like animal drawing or creature design or anything like that. That's all the stuff I taught myself. Um, and using Pokemon as sort of like a study guide for that was great because I would be forced to think of animals that I would not normally draw. Like, you know, I would never draw like a rhino before then, but like now I know how to draw a rhino because I had to learn for drawing Pokemon. Nice. I remember before I got into Pokemon, I did a, 
uh, table at Artist Alley one year, and someone asked me to draw a typhlosion. Mm -hmm. Typhlosion. Typhlosion. Yeah. Typhlosion. And I was like, okay, I'll draw it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> and they were like, it's a bear that's on fire. Right? Yeah. And so I drew that, and they were very disappointed <laughs> in the result. That reminds me when I was a kid, there was like a like a county fair that my friends and I were at. And like street sharks was a thing then. Oh yeah, they were jawsome. Yeah, right. And like, <laughs> so but you know there was a face painter and like one of my friends was like, hey, I want a street shark, and so he drew like a shark with wheels. <laughs> Which as an adult, I would be pretty stoked. Yeah, a shark no, like, with wheels. I, I did not realize how clever that was until many years later. <laughs> and that's the magic of art. <laughs> yeah. Right. So how did that like Detective Pikachu stuff come up? So they were just like, hey, can you draw some? We like your work. Can you draw some stuff for us? Or? Yeah, basically, like the uh, the production designer, um, you know, like most adults, was not super familiar with Pokemon. So he was like, what do these things look like? What do realistic Pokemon look like? And, and obviously, he found me through you know one of the articles written about the pieces, or like you know, and also just through DeviantArt. And um, yeah, and then he like gave me a call and said, you want to work on a Pokemon movie? And I thought it was a scam, but um, <laughs> like, of course, uh, yeah. And uh, then I was, I had to move down to LA within a week, and it was very, very fast. So you were like in house for that? Yeah, or? yeah, I was in the art department for um, uh, a little over seven months. And did they like assign you a Pokemon? Were they like, today we want you to do this one, or? Um, yeah. Uh, they, they did, um, well, like, yeah, it's just sort of, because I was like an in-house concept artist, so I did like like some of everything. Um, and I was like, just drawing Pokemon like every day for for months, which was like a dream job, but then also sort of burned me out on drawing Pokemon for a little <laughs> while. That movie has so many Pokemon in it. Yeah. So even like in like the background, and like some of them you have to pay like real close attention to just catch like a little glimpse of it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, it came out really well. I thought like the effects teams did a wonderful job. People have begun sending DeviantArt account links to Jurassic Park Live. Thank you for oh, sharing, yeah. everyone. Yeah, cool. <laughs> that can be a team out in. Oh yes, let's do that. Only if they have Indominus Rex. Indominus Rex. You know that they redid the ride at Universal, and they had this cool like T Rex versus Indominus Rex like face off at the end, but like Indominus Rex broke oh, no. like the first like two weeks, and then it was just T Rex again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Indominus Rex is back. I think it's been broken. Um, Good riddance, I say. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> the king of dinosaurs for a reason. I went to the <laughs> the press preview night for that ride, and it was a lot of fun. Uh. RJ, yes. you may not be old enough, which is something I get to say more and more in my life. <laughs> uh, but do you recall when Brontosaurus was debunked? Uh, well, I don't. I don't think I remember it being an actual like debunk. I, like I grew up knowing that it was debunked, um, wow. but it's been rebunked. It has been rebunked. Yeah, I've not heard of this. Yeah, Brontosaurus is a thing again. What? Yeah. My world is shattered. Yeah. I am shook it. To the Cretaceous, though. Well, that boy's a Jurassic one, but I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> and is Pluto a planet? Or? I don't know the, that one. I think planet science is bullshit. <laughs> Who are we to say what oh, is and what isn't a planet? All well, the planet scientists just clicked that and left the chat. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting links about the return of the Brontosaurus. Oh. oh. Yeah, I think uh, it was like 2015 or something. Other great, uh, other great debunkings. Uh, remember when people used to think dinosaurs had two brains? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was so dumb because they put that in Pacific Rim. Like they said, the kaiju's have two brains, like dinosaurs. They said, and I was just, I was very upset by that. <laughs> so did you go to the premiere of Pokemon, or did you get invited? No, no. no. Concept artists are pretty low on the totem pole. Yeah. All, all things said and done, you know, like it should be probably be higher because they sort of like make the whole look of the movie. But yeah, you know. that's odd. Yeah, 
If it makes you feel better, we didn't get invited to the Sonic premiere. Yeah, Matt was trying real hard for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that one. Oh, it looks great. I think Jim Carrey's amazing casting. <laughs> I'm not as high on, on Jim Carrey, but... No? Oh, oh he's perfect. Yeah. Oh. That's fair. Everyone can have their own vibe. Yeah. I was sad to see they weren't serving chili dogs at the premiere. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen any chili dogs in any of the promotional materials. And like Jack in the Box has like a, yeah. a thing with them, and yeah. they're not doing chili dogs. It's like mini tacos? Yeah, <laughs> Sonic and mini tacos, you know, the thing everybody knows Sonic loves. What did you think of the original design versus the new design? I think they did a wonderful job redoing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, there's not many cases where I'm in favor of like, you know, I hate it when people are like, oh, I fixed it, I made it better. Like, no, you didn't. Like, you're just like some dick on the internet, right? But like, uh, when they did that with Sonic, I was like, oh yeah, you guys are right. You, you did it better. Yeah, uh, a DeviantArt artist was brought in to consult on that too. Yeah, Tyson has. Yeah, Tyson's great. Worked with him on something like two years back, I think? I've only met him like at conventions, but he seems like a nice guy. Yeah. Always enjoy. Yeah, he was like the right guy for that job. Like, it was uh, it was really good that they reached out to him. Everybody's waiting for a fella to move. No. What color do you prefer working with? Warm colors. Red's my favorite color. Red is your favorite color? Yeah. I know, I'm like super basic. Red's my favorite color and T-Rex is my favorite animal. I don't know, I don't think that made people pop on red anymore. I think we saw a major kick to, uh, like a lot of people like black. I think black is like one of the best colors for like devices, but I think red is like by far and away like the best accent color. I don't know if I would like buy like a red PS4, but I, you know, I'd get a, a black PS4 that has like red furnishing, you know. Hmm. Did you have the red iPod? That was no, I right? didn't. Like that was that one came out like right before I got an iPod. Project Red. Yeah, how old are we? I'm talking yeah. about iPods. iPod. You guys remember Microsoft Zoom? Yeah? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Is that what you had? You went to one kid in school and had the Zoom, and everybody sees it and is like, oh. <laughs> you need some lunch money, man? Microsoft has like a remarkable habit of trying to do something that the comp competition is doing and just doing like much worse at it. They're really good at doing worse. Danny says, get off her lawn. <laughs> CS says they remember having the first iPod, then later they had the blue one when they made the rainbow model. Yeah. That era of like early aughts Apple electronics are hilarious. Like there's that one iMac that's just like a little like half sphere with like a stick coming off of it and it has the whole monitor. That one is hilarious. Yeah, I remember that one. The little CD tray was in the bottom. Yeah. Room. And then they made like the rainbow one. Yeah. You know, where it's like all in one. There's that one like ten thousand dollar computer that the only person that had was Jerry Seinfeld. That failed pilot talking to comedians on computers. <laughs> uh, Devin wants to know: uh, Do you think you're at the point in your career where paintings take you more time to complete because you're putting more detail into them, or less time to complete because you're finding better ways to render stuff? So that's a tricky thing because. <laughs> Uh, I'm always finding better ways and faster ways to do things, but then that allows me to be more ambitious. So then I still take about as long, even though I'm like doing more. It's like something that looks like this quality, you know, would have taken me like twice as long five years ago. Um, but I was still, you know, spending like 30 hours to finish a picture like five years ago. 
Okay, right now everyone in chat is just kind of nerding out over your detail. Oh yeah, I like I like scales. Um, scales are just something that work in my head. There's like just enough rhyme and reason to them, but they're still like random and fun. I think like fur is one of my least favorite integuments to do. Because fur is like it's, it's a lot more uh, like repetitive. There's not as many like fun different shapes to work in there. It's all just strands of hair. Can I ask you about your friend that you have on the desk here? Oh sure. Um, Oh yeah, let's take a brief second and pop to that other camera so yeah. that we can see stuff better. Alright. So you brought these in and you've had them at your desk while you've been drawing. What's what's the story behind those? Boy, nobody can see that. It's like a white thing. Uh, there it goes. Okay, they can see that. Uh, so this is a, a crocodile monitor death cast. Um, a death cast is when they take a dead animal and then do a cast from it. Um, but they're like super handy because like they're you know the most accurate you can be. So if you see like all those neck wrinkles, they're as crisp and as detailed as they are in life. So that's super cool and very helpful. I have another one, which is bigger, which is a uh, savanna monitor head. There's Does that just help you like for a reference? Is yeah, no, or... they're really really good reference tools. Um, well, I get them from a guy named Kyle Stockton, uh, his Etsy is Stockton Skulls, but um, yeah, no, they're awesome, like really, really good detail on these suckers, and yeah, I mean, I'm obsessed with detail, so like the better reference material I get, the, um, the more uh, I can do with it, like, you know, there's stuff about these scales that I found, Let's see if they can pull up. Like there's like one big node in the middle and then like a bunch of smaller scales around it. But if you just look at photos, you look at it from a distance, it just looks like one big scale. And you don't realize like there's a, like a ring of like, you know, little scales around it, which is really neat. So I'm always buying death casts. I have like a three foot caiman in my office back home. Wow. These are your travel size ones? Yeah, just because, like, I'm only doing portraits, or, like, you know, the big guy is just a portrait. So I thought that these would be helpful to have on hand. Surprisingly heavy. Yeah, they're solid. Um, solid cast resin. And, like, boy, the detail on them is good. I have, like, a Gaboon Viper head, and, like, you can actually see under the scales. Like, they're so crisply, crisply cast. Crisp, crisply? Is that a word? We put a link to the stock and skulls in the chat. Sure, I'll always, appreciate it. Always good to give links to things that might help people. Yeah, no, I, I buy his stuff all the time. He's got like really good prices. Like, it's, there's not a whole lot of people that make like death casts, but he's like the best and also the cheapest. It's, it's wonderful. Also, like, I'm not really seeing like any hefty seams or anything. Like, that's oh, yeah, really I don't, cast. honestly, I don't know how <laughs> he does them so clean. Like, they are. They are wonderful. <laughs> I've got like an emu foot also, which is very helpful because emu feet look exactly like dinosaur feet. <laughs> because emus are dinosaurs, which I guess is redundant, but. Oh, so one thing I want to talk about. Yeah. Because I, I work in social media, so I, I feel your pain on this. What's it like with your T Rex piece floating? Uh, the, the white Definitely. fluffy one yep. yeah uh, I mean it's just like I don't really care if people are reposting my work you know just like link back to me if you can um, but what I care about is like when people are using them it's like the butt of a joke and people mm -hmm. like it keeps coming up in tweets that are like haha t-rex looked like a big fluffy chicken like well okay but uh, first of all <laughs> I did that piece like in 2014 um, and it wasn't even like super accurate for the time it was pretty speculative and second of all, I have a new thing, and I, I try to show them what it looks like, but it's not as, um, it's not quite as, as funny. It's, it's not a, a gotcha where they can just be like, haha, look at this stupid feathered thing. Yeah, it's always tough when they don't do their homework. <laughs> yeah, anyway. well, I mean, there's all those, like, content curators, right, where they're just, yeah. like, reposting people's shit, and that's the bane of artists, because they don't credit you. 
Now, if you don't have the uh, money or the storage space for these physical references, uh, or what do you recommend other artists use? Um, I mean, if you can get books, books are great. Uh, if, you, if you've got, like, you know, a single bookshelf, you know, you can hold, like, 40 books on it. Um, I've got a bunch of books also. I just, uh, I just, all of the stuff, all the money I get, I always just, like, put back into, like, cool reference material. Like, I just keep constantly buying skulls. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, yeah, you know, obviously you just have, like, a digital, like, library on your computer. Um, and I use Google Images for like everything, you know, like everyone else does. But there's a, a new stock photo website I actually just found out about that I've been using, which is great because like most stock photo websites don't have like an affordable plan for like single users. And they have like, it's like 25 bucks a month and you can get download five stock images a month. But you know, if you don't download them, then they roll over, uh, which is great. It's, it's a website called Dreams Time, but um, they have like a really good collection of like really high resolution reptile photos which I used in here actually for a number of things. Um, where did I put the, that's not the right one. Nope. This guy, like this is from that website, but you know, it's like really high detail and I was using some of his scales. Oh yeah, I should do that. Um, so I was using some of this guy's scales uh, for like, just like layering in like some extra detail. Uh, but yeah, you can see like they're really high res because this is a very big file and you can zoom right up in there. So um, yeah, if you need like like really high detail, you know, really good resolution photos, that's going to be a good site for you to check out. Cool. But yeah, I mean, honestly, just, you know, if you see a cool like post on Twitter or wherever, save that image and just like hold on to it and use it later. You know, you can rationalize it to yourself that you're not wasting time. You're uh, collecting inspiration. How do you decide the uh, like the, the color scheme for your for your dinosaurs and your creatures? Um, dinosaurs is different um, because dinosaurs, you have to focus a lot more on like you know what's like possible or like what's realistic in the natural world, um, and for animals that primarily just eat meat, which means no fish, no, um, no bugs, uh, no fruit, nothing like that. So animals that primarily just eat meat, they can usually only produce warm colors. Um, like the, like m their metabolism can only like yield like warm color palettes. So that's why you see like, you know, lots of uh, predators have like oranges and browns and yellows. And so if you're doing like a theropod dinosaur, um, like a large theropod that does not eat fish, then you should like lean into those colors more, um, just like earthy tones. Your colors are based in reality. Uh, yes, as much as possible. Cool. Um, and then you know, for fantasy stuff, it's like whatever. But still, like I, I pull a lot from real life stuff because I like it. <laughs> um, like this little fishy dragon guy here uh, with the the squid in his mouth. His colors are obviously like greatly influenced by gannets and. Um, Gannets and like you know just very other various other seabirds because it makes sense because if this thing lives in a similar similar ecological niche then they're gonna present similar ecological uh, colors based on their environment. So something that kind of ties into uh, science and creatures that we don't have information about. Do you ever get into like No Man's Sky or Spore? Uh, not Spore. I did play No Man's Sky for a bit, um, but I played it like right at launch when it Oof. wasn't a whole lot there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't gotten back to it yet, but I mean, for me, randomly generated creatures are never as interesting as like, you know, hand designed creatures. Um, and that's just, that's true of all things. Like I think randomly generated stuff just never really works. Because you can always tell that like a computer spit that out and it wasn't like you know put together with like love or attention. Um, so like as far as creature designs and games, like my favorite stuff is Monster Hunter. Ooh, Monster Hunter has some good stuff. I mean that piece we were talking about earlier is Monster Hunter. Yes, yeah, the, the Rathalos piece. Um, I yeah, dream job would be to like work on something for Monster Hunter. Hey VP, do we have a connection with Capcom? <laughs> <laughs> 
and I know they know who I am, at least their social media manager knows. <laughs> Do you play Monster Hunter as well? Oh yeah. What what uh, what weapon do you main? I use hammer. Hammer. You and I think uh, Vampy bit me is also a hammer main. I like hammer because uh, you just do like really big hits and then you run away. It's uh, <laughs> it works for my personality. I play the hunting horn. Hunting horn guys are great when you have them in your team, but I do not want to use one. I love playing with Honey Horn users though because they're always buffing me. Yes. Bloody Wing is also a hammer. I think everyone loves hammer. That's I mean, they're some of the coolest looking weapons in the game. The yeah. design and how Monster Hunter like shows off those aspects from the creature that you crafted from. I used to do like um, longsword a lot, but uh, especially in World when they like gave Hammer the slide, like, somersault thing into the air. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's, like, the most fun thing in a video game. This, someone legitimately just said that in chat. Yeah. The Bloody Wing says, sliding with the hammer, jump and spin feels so good. Yeah. And then the monster flinches. No, it's it's very satisfying. You two are of one mind right now. This is the connection that art makes. <laughs> I don't know. Are you? I don't know anything much about Overwatch other than it's got uh, pretty good art direction uh, if you want to be a popular shooter. They have a pretty strong character design language. Uh, the fifth sis says, do you ever create something so completely out of your realm? And if so, do you go public with the finished work? And if yes on that, what drives that decision? Uh, I don't know what's super completely out of my realm. Like, I guess um, one example is like, I've been really back into my Gundam bullshit recently. Uh, it's like, I fall into Gundam like every January and I just like love Gundam um, every January. And uh, so I was like drawing a Gundam the other night and I'm not very good at mechs, but I'd like to be someday. So it was like my first step on that journey, but I don't think I'm gonna post it anywhere publicly um, unless I like put more time into it just cause you know, it's not much to look at yet. When you, like as someone who's like kind of curating your brand, do you typically post stuff that doesn't necessarily fall into it if you complete it? Um, but, like it depends like most I'm lucky that uh, most of the stuff I do is stuff that's like sort of to my interests mm -hmm. um, just because like you know I'm, I've been fortunate enough to get a name in this industry and that name is like hey I draw good monsters <laughs> um, so most of the time what I'm working on is would be good for my brand to post it but you know I did something for like a TV commercial last year that I'm probably not going to post anywhere because like nobody would care what it is <laughs> the anime it was not. Um, it was anatomical. Oh. Uh, speaking of something a little bit more realistic based, uh, Milk Buds TV says, do you only draw stuff that's out of this world, stuff you haven't seen? like, Or do you create stuff that is uh, currently like existing? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I draw lots of dinosaurs, which are real. <laughs> Uh, contrary to what creationists might lead you to believe, but um, no. So I, I do sometimes like modern animals, uh, especially if I can, like go to a zoo. I'll draw like real animals, but like for me, the stuff that interests me most is like fantasy stuff, um, like dragons, uh, outside of dinosaurs, obviously. Um, but I, lo I love dragons. I love, um, yeah, like anything that has like a big mouth and lots of teeth. Uh, that's sort of where I'm at. So when you go to the zoo, do you draw like reptiles? Is that I draw everything. Time, or? No, I'll just... You draw like a flamingo? Yeah, of course. Also, technically, birds are reptiles. No, so there's a little no, factoid. There yeah, no, I, um, I, I basically draw like whatever's holding still, you know? Because in my line of work, it's helpful to know how to draw all animals. I don't judge, except I refuse to draw horses because they're dumb. 
I'm in here first. Uh, oh. The equestrian society just left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Good riddance, I say. I saw a lot of horses in medieval times. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been to medieval times? No, I haven't. I've only seen it in like movies. It's about the what? cable gang. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been to Renaissance fairs, so I like have a pretty good idea of what to expect. I think. It's like that, but you eat food. Yeah. And it's more like family friendly. Yeah, I like a, I like a good Renaissance fair every once in a while um, because, uh, like most white men, I own swords. Mm. What kind of swords do you have? I, I have like a whole, because like when I was a teenager, I was like really into swords because I'm, you know, an idiot. And uh, <laughs> so I have like a whole bunch of them um, in, a, in a storage trailer. But um, the only one that I have like out is like a Cold Steel Zweihander. Uh, I got it for my 25th birthday and it's big. And uh, I like big swords because I'm basic. So don't break into his house. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you could probably still uh, get me before I can swing that thing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold still. Let me just. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the, my go tos for when I'm working on stuff and I need something just playing is Forged in Fire. Oh, dude, yeah, me too. Oh, it's so much fun to watch. I own all the seasons on Amazon. <laughs> it's just like, uh, okay, today we're going to have you make a Bowie knife out of a pinball machine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? No, it's great. Like, I was, uh, was at a job once, and this dude's like, can you design a smith? And I'm like, oh, man, can I? <laughs> I know something about that now. <laughs> uh, Rin Arts wants to know, do you research into mythologies and mythological creatures? Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I just, I, every project I work on, I try to do research. Um, especially if it's something I don't know much about. So I was working on like some some mythological stuff in the last couple of years, and yeah, I just like spent a bunch of time on Wikipedia, and then like delve into like some of the smaller sites. And I think any piece that you spend like that little extra time researching on, people can tell. And that's sort of like my brand is people can tell I spent too long on something. <laughs> And uh, people are asking about the new Pokemon game. Do you play them, or what are your thoughts on the new fossil Pokemon? Oh, yeah. So, yes, I, I play them. I, I've got Sword, um, and I beat yeah. Sword. Yeah, Shield is a silly dog. Yeah, dude, I heard <laughs> I heard the Sword outsold Shield by, like, 5 to 1. No one wants that dog. Yeah, but... It could be a Sword dog. <laughs> right? Yeah. The, uh, but no, so the fossil Pokemon, I think, are a really fascinating idea. But I wish there was like the pure versions of them where they weren't mashed up because I want, because they have like a Dunkleosteus, which is like a great prehistoric fish. And they have like a little Plesiosaur, which is cool. But, you know, they're stuck together with something else and they just, it's very disappointing. So I wish that, I hope in the DLC you can get like the original versions of each. Uh, going back to mythology, what uh, mythology is your favorite? Ooh. Uh, or what is one that you enjoy creating within or getting reference from? I mean, like, just general, like, medieval European bestiary stuff is, like, really cool. Because, like, you know, it sort of lumps in some of, like, the, the ancient Greece stuff. You, you know, you still get griffins and, and that sort of stuff. But um, I really like medieval European dragons. Um, again, I'm pretty basic with my taste. I like... Like, if there's a main character in a TV show, that's my favorite character in the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the taxidermy, like, lion from medieval times? Like, the era not you? Uh, I mean, I've seen lots of... Well, one of my favorite things is, like, looking at, like, those old bestiaries where they're just... Like, they had the animal described to them, but they had clearly never seen one. Yes, exactly. I love that stuff so much. <laughs> There's like some crazy elephant ones. <laughs> yeah, those are always fun when it's like, okay, go, go tell me what this looks like. Great, I've drawn it. Yeah, there's like Albrecht Durer's Rhino, where like, it looks like it's actually wearing like plate mail because somebody <laughs> saw an Indian rhino and like described it as wearing like plates. 
Uh, do you have any artistic goals you're still working towards? Oh yeah, always uh, be better. <laughs> just just get better at painting because everybody tells me, hey, you're pretty good at painting, but like I don't feel good at painting. And when I see like you know like the really top talent in the field, uh, you know, anytime like Yana Shermer updates a picture, I just like feel really bad about myself. <laughs> So I want to be like one of them. So I want to be like one of the artists that like all the other artists look up to. So that's that's my goal. Did you make it past your hair like? Uh no. Um, I like met her once at like a massive black workshop in like 2012 or 11. Uh, and, like I embarrassed myself because I was like bragging about how many daily deviations I had. Like <laughs> she wouldn't fucking care about that. Like, <laughs> she, she has she has quite a few too. I know. I was trying to be like, hey, I'm like you. <laughs> Best, yeah. yeah, I want to be 21 again. Put Matt talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I have an art crush in every single art. Yeah. <laughs> it's all magic to me. I'm like, wow! <laughs> I get a reel him back sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt has a, a second job when I go through Artist Alley. It's like, please don't compliment this artist too much. <laughs> it's childish. <laughs> He's just awkward in it, too. In the same way that you, you are, I'm sure you were. Yeah, there was, there's like, an artist I really enjoy uh, who goes under the handle Chuanji, and I hadn't met them before in that light box. I was, like, so stoked. Yeah. And we went up to her booth, and I just said, I really like your art, by the way. <laughs> that was the opening line. Was like, oh, there was line. <laughs> Why was it by the way? No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else had been said. <laughs> The ones that I always feel bad about is like meeting like you know artists that I like I idolize, but they're you know when you meet them in person you realize that they're like kind of a quiet person, mm -hmm. and so like you can't tell if they just don't like you or if they just don't talk much. Mm -hmm. Lots of introverts in the artistic community. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like pretty introverted until it's like art, and then I'll I'll uh, be very much that guy. It's like, have you seen my picture? <laughs> uh. What medium of traditional painting inspires your art style the most? Uh, I mean, I like, I don't look at traditional painting like that much, even though I probably should. Um, but I, I really like John Singer Sargent's stuff. Everybody likes him because he his stuff looks like, you know, Photoshop paintings. Um, Kev Walker is a magic card artist. He did a lot of traditional stuff. It's really neat looking. Um, yeah, I mean, traditional guys are not usually like my go-to. Nice. I also don't get as inspired by like art as much as I do by nature. Um, I mostly try to look for inspirational sources outside of the world of art because when you're like looking at somebody's painting, like that's already a like a level of, of abstraction away from nature, and so I want to like go to the source and then like abstract it myself, um, which I think. Yeah, like that's just better for creature design in general because you're not like troping other people. You ever done an art battle? No, no, not really. Uh, I like signed up to be part of one in like 2007 on DeviantArt when they were like first coming around, and um, <laughs> I I did like half of a sketch and said, "Oops, this is it." <laughs> <laughs> but I thought your number one tip was finish your art. Yeah, that was before I did that. <laughs> Lesson learned. All right, well, we're going to start wrapping things up. Yeah, are you done? Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I could be. So why don't we zoom out for just a sec, and uh, let's let's talk about some of the things that you feel you'll still work on on this, get, get a little bit of uh, post-finish retrospective, even though it's not finished. Sure. Um, yeah, so basically... It's just, you know, you can never have enough rendering, you know, you render forever. Um, so it's, it's mostly just like a bit more cleanup around like the snout scales, which is what I was doing. Um, and then like maybe blurring a few edges here and there. But I mean, it's, it's not in bad shape. Um, it's probably got like maybe another two hours in it uh, if I really wanted to. Cool. Um, uh, again, the theme on this one. Uh, yeah, the theme is kindred because that bird man and that whale man are friends and family. Awesome. 
Uh, yeah, any final questions for RJ Chat? You've got about 20 second delay. <laughs> <laughs> and that way we can get wrapped up, get some dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Danny's saying thank you for being awesome. No problem. It's not a question, but it's appreciated. <laughs> Uh, any advice for people who struggle with mental blocks? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, the best advice for that is just keep working. Like, art block and mental block, like, just <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> like, I don't know. I haven't had art, art block ever, as far as I can tell, um, as far as I remember. It's always just been like, hey, I have to draw this next. Like, you know, I always have things that I want to draw or have to draw. Um, so I've just, like, never hit that wall where I just didn't have ideas because like I have to have ideas. Awesome, and uh, how many hours a day should an artist practice if they want to be serious artists? Uh, I mean for me, like because I have like a app on my computer that tells me how long I spend working and stuff and every day. Um, I usually tap out between five and six hours of time in Photoshop every day. Uh, so if you're doing that, you'll be fine. <laughs> Um, I know like Dave Raposa did like 16 hours of studies for like three months or something like 10 years ago and that's how he got super good. So do that if you have like the intestinal fortitude. I don't. Um, just yeah, like draw, you know, as much as you want to as, you know, as often as you can and forsake all your familial relationships and you'll be good. Uh, awesome. I think on that we're going to probably stop. Uh... <laughs> we'll just end when I tell people to avoid their family. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to roll up so that we can get some dinner going and not stay up too late. Uh, yeah, see you. Good point. Don't overwork yourself too hard. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us, guys. And uh, yeah, uh, where can they find you on DeviantArt? Uh, you can find me on uh, username Arbalus, that rhymes with Marvelous. Or you can just search RJ Palmer and you'll probably find it too. Yeah, that uh, will. Yeah. All right, thank you everyone for joining us and have a good one. Bye guys. You want to stop that stream?